Hello everyone, welcome to part three of this three-part series with Lou Scott, a member of the 1968 Olympic team in Mexico City, my high school cross-country coach at Oak Park High School. If you listen to part two, feel free to fast forward to the seven minute and 15 second mark of part three of this incredible podcast with Coach Scott right here in the Sports Deli. For those of you that did not listen to part two, we are recapping the last six minutes of part two before we finish with the third and final part to this three-part series right here on the Sports Deli. Welcome first-time listeners and returners to the Sports Deli. To find out more about the Sports Deli Podcast, check us out online at thesportsdelipodcast.com. And whether you're folding laundry, driving, exercising, or cooking, Grab your favorite deli sandwich or bagel and your favorite beverage, and let's do this together in the Sports Deli. We are honored to have Detroit native Lou Scott on the podcast. After trying to locate my former high school cross-country coach at Oak Park High School for the last eight months during the pandemic, a huge thanks again to Gary Corbett in Detroit who helped me track Coach Scott down, no pun intended, and we are so lucky and blessed to have you in the Sports Deli to share your incredible journey for the first time ever on a podcast. He attended Old Eastern High, now known as MLK High School, and had to train without a track and would have to go to Belle Isle to train on their track. He had a paper route, which, as you will hear later, is the reason he found his calling when his bike broke in the middle of his paper route one day. And not long thereafter, beat the reigning city champ in the half mile during his first meet ever. He used to find out what his opponents would do to train and double his training. He learned his toughness from Lorenzo Wright, his coach who won the four by one at the 1948 Olympics. And when coach Scott decided to wear roller skates one day, coach Wright put a chair in the middle of the track and told Lou, when I'm tired of watching you run, you can leave. And Lou never wore roller skates ever again. Ironically, Coach Scott, as a professional, later ran in the same stadium in London where Coach Wright won his gold medal in 1948. He ran his collegiate track and cross country at Arizona State University, and Lou Scott represented the United States in the 1968 Olympics. And you don't want to miss this historic interview as Coach Scott not only shares his remarkable journey, but we'll talk about the aftermath of John Carlos, Tommy Smith, and Peter Norman's decision to protest during the Olympics. Jesse Owens was a keynote speaker at the 1968 Olympics. Bob Beeman was his roommate. He won the silver medal in the 1967 Pan American Games in Winnipeg. He had personal bests in the mile of four minutes and four seconds and some change. The two mile was eight minutes, 35 seconds. That was in 1967. The mile was in 64. And the 5,000 meters was 13 minutes, 46 seconds in 1968. Lou was the second African-American long distance runner in the history of the Olympics. He turned professional eventually and ran in Tokyo, ironically, which we'll talk about, London and Italy. He shares a birthday with Beyonce and Damon Wayans. He taught and coached for nearly 40 years, as did his brother, shout out and flowers to Benny, who set this up in Detroit. And he's a deacon. He loves to read, still runs with his training partners who are in their 80s and 90s. And you cannot find him anywhere online because he doesn't do social media. And that's why it took me eight months to track him down. And again, Coach, this is your first ever podcast, and I, I can't tell you uh, how extraordinarily honored we are to uh, have you get in the Sports Deli karma and, and, and welcome. <laughs> there he is. Stuff work, Lou. He's good. The, the well, deacon, Coach well, Scott, in the house. He's got the phone up in here. He's going to put on his uh, Olympic jacket. I like that. I love it. Take your yeah, time. <laughs> But yes, sir. Look at that Olympic jacket. This is the one I marched in the stadium. Uh, you know, in '68, I will keep this jacket till I die. You earned it. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. 
Coach, wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to see you too, Mike. God bless you. <laughs> there were mornings when I when I was training, I was so tired that I, I, I had to, you know, take one leg, put it on the side of the bed, take the other leg, put it on the side of the bed. Okay. Don't talk because if you talk, you'll think and you'll talk yourself out of it. See, my thing was guaranteeing me a spot on the Olympic team, first, second, or third. <clears throat> and I didn't care what work I had to do to achieve it. I did, you know, that was not an right, option. Right. Um, that's a part of the hard work. It's a part of devotion, perseverance. Oh. Um, I just hated the fact that I was poor because yeah. I could have done so much in the sport of track and field. Um, I don't look at race. I don't look at a lot of that stuff. Uh, I'm like this. Other people did. Th they did, but I, I didn't because that's not part of my focus. Uh, I don't use excuses. And I don't accept excuses. So I, I never um, made excuses about anything I did. I just hated that I was poor because um, a lot of the guys on the Olympic team, they, their families had money. And so when you have money, you have options. Um, the only option I had was to make a team and try to get me a job teaching school so I could support my family. So, so I, I was running the hurdle after hurdle, but I was not going to let anything interfere with making that Olympic team. Nothing. We will now begin part three of this three-part series with Lou Scott, member of the United States men's track and field team who competed in Mexico City right here in the sports telling. You're wearing your Olympic jacket that you yes, wore sir. in the uh, opening ceremonies in Mexico City. And um, uh, yeah. We had a blue turtleneck mm. and white pants to go with it. I've mm. worn those out. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you, uh, you know, you, you mentioned your friends, Lee Evans and Tommy Smith and, and John Carlos, and obviously they're... Uh, <clears throat> John Carlos in particular, and and some of, and the protesting that happened there. But before the Olympics, um, you know, uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos helped organize, you know, the Olympic project for human rights. Correct. And you know, so it was it was a group that reflected, you know, their Black pride, and obviously a different time than if somebody was doing that now, and social consciousness. I was a member of that too. Uh, it, it was, you know, a choice to join or not to join. Some of the athletes decided not to join. They were afraid. Of the the deal was, if you got on the podium, the the, the black glove, you raise your hand and bow your head. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> were there any white people in that group? <clears throat> no. They were saying, "What do you want to do? Go to another country?" No, we don't want to go to another country. We want to better it here. Better opportunities um, for everybody. Equal right. opportunities. Uh, Dr. Harry Edwards was one of the key um, motivators in, in that movement. He came by and talked with us. Um, what happens is like uh, George Foreman, he right. decided not to join us. Wow. So... Um, why was that? I, I don't want to call him an Uncle Tom because I, 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 I don't know that to be true. Yeah. But he, after he won his goal, he, he waved an a, a, a American flag. I have nothing against that. But uh, also, I messaged. So you're saying that he didn't use his platform in the way oh, that. No, he, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he, no. He wasn't about to. <laughs> he, there he were others good. that did the same thing. But if you didn't get on the uh, podium, you were ir irrelevant because they wouldn't notice you because you didn't have a platform to use. So did the Olympic Committee know about? Uh, <clears throat> they the knew, Olympic yes. And so there was, was there any backlash or said, you know, you're not going to get on the, because, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, even now when Gwen Berry uh, during these Olympic trials, you know, she turned away during the playing of the national anthem and, you know, yeah. there, 
but there there's penalties for you know protesting uh during the olympics but so how today they don't have the penalties that we had right john carlos and tommy smith in fact carlos wife committed suicide uh oh. tommy smith got a job at a um car dealership but he was supposed to wash the cars and if somebody wanted to come and see him, he had to change his clothes and go out and put his, you know, they 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 suffered severely. Lee Evans, oh God rest his soul, he just passed a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> but Lee Evans, Larry James, Ron Freeman, all those guys went to Africa to coach uh, after, you know, they were barred from the Olympics. You, you know, the penalty was if you do it, you get barred. Well, Peter Norman too from Australia. Yeah, you know, he was on the podium too, and he didn't have a glove on, uh, but you know he he still was a part of that protest. And I it think he put his he bowed his head. Bowed his head, and yeah. but it wasn't until 2012, long after he had passed, that Australia apologized and acknowledged. You know what he did was the right thing to do, obviously, and you know looking back on it, but uh, it's it's amazing what they suffered. You know, you know better than anybody what they had to go through after that. Um, you know, you were able to go run professionally, but you weren't on that podium. Yeah, but too little, too late. Um, and we were all amateurs back then, professional. That that glove and fist, um, we were trying to tell them also that we are great runners and we could do better as professional runners than as uh, amateur runners. Because I had to teach school. And while I'm teaching, my competitors out there on the track working out. <clears throat> so uh, we had two issues to, to, to deal with. Well, you were trying to get more black coaches hired, right? And, and, and then part of it was you, you rescinded Olympic invitations to Rhodesia, South Africa, because they were practicing apartheid. Yeah, but the poor people weren't. <laughs> the poor people, right. It wasn't the, the project initially to boycott the Olympics altogether? No, that, no. Ne that was never an issue because we got in a meeting and, and um, we had a vote. That was, that was never an issue, no. Wow, interesting. Jesse, Jesse Owens. Owens was our keynote speaker. That's right. And some of the guys called him an Uncle Tom, but they didn't realize that in 1936, he did what he could do because of the sign of the times. Uh, things kept getting better. <clears throat> uh, I'm jealous of the of these Olympic athletes now because oh they have, um, you know, they have all kinds of coaches. Uh, you know, they got agents. Um, <laughs> the things that I had to do on my own. They have right. somebody to do it for them. <laughs> but I mean, I'm still happy for them. I'm never one to, um, you know, live in a glass house and throw rocks at people. <laughs> right. Well, and we're going to Tokyo. You've been to Tokyo. What are, what are they, what are they uh, going to expect in Tokyo? Well, I hope they get good weather. But right now, Tokyo is exp experiencing the covert uh, where that they're not going to have uh, spectators, right? So they're going to have to have a, a very um, uh, active code for you know cleaning and because when we went to Mexico, we had to have food flown in from America, and I still got sick. Wow! <laughs> I was taking seven shots a day uh, per meal. Oh my goodness! Seven seven shots per meal per day. Uh, they call it Montezuma's Revenge, <laughs> and trust me, it was revengeful. <laughs> wow. But um, I, I ran in a conference back then. We were in the Western Athletic Conference. Right. Um, we were the only school on sea level, and I never won a conference title because uh, the guys, all they did was wait for me to get tired, <laughs> mm. and it was nothing I could do. They run right past me. So my goal was to make the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. uh, so anybody that asked me, did you get a medal? I don't know why people ask you that. Um, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of athletes and they only give out three awards. <laughs> but I, I know when a person asks me that, that they are ignorant of the sports world. 
But well, it's uh, like in basketball, they say, how many points do you score? Yeah. You know, there's so many other things going on. It always used to drive me nuts. You know, it's like, do you know everything that's going on in a basketball game? Like, who cares if it's just the points kind of thing? Yeah, well, some guys are defense only. Yeah, exactly. So, so he's not going to score any points, but he's going to make sure you don't score any <laughs> But well, um, besides getting sick, how was the Olympic experience? You know, you, you did well in the trials, right? Well, like I said, Bob Beeman was my roommate. Yeah. And um, Bob and I were, became re- very close at the trials. Uh, he was tra- training for the 100 and 200, but he didn't have enough speed. So he got in the long jump and he used the long jump uh, as his platform. But nobody ever could imagine him jumping 29, two and a half. He nearly jumped out of the pit. He nearly <laughs> jumped out of the pit. I'm real. Um, 29, two and a half will win probably the next four Olympics. Really? Because <laughs> I was watching the guys that qualified were jumping 26 feet. It, uh, that we we just all sat down and said wow it's unbelievable and so how were the crowds i mean how was it to just to be in another in another country is that the first time you were in another well you were in toronto but that's not you know it's a little no, bit different um when i made Canada. the united states track team we went to europe i toured europe I, in fact i ran in the same stadium that mr wright ran in that's right before they made a new one that was in london we went to um, Venezia, Italy, and we were in Rome and Germany. Um, and of course, I went to Tokyo as a professional runner. But um, uh, I, I've been around. But f- the people like to get your autograph. Sometimes people would get get your autograph five or six six times. And um, you know, um, when we were in Olympic Village, we would have to tell a guy, go out there and, and, and see how many people are out there. <laughs> and they would get bogged down and that way we, we could go where we were going because yeah. They, <laughs> they, yeah, they would stand out in front of the hotel and wait until you came out and they put those papers in your face and you had to sign them. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yes, but it was a wonderful experience. Um, I had two dreams in life. One was to graduate from college and one was to make the Olympic team and God mm. granted me both of them. Wow. And, you know, uh, if God, for some unforsaken reason, decide not to do anything for me the rest of my life, I would have to spend the rest of my life thanking him for what he's already done. Well, I mean, you taught for a long time. Uh, I'm sure that was rewarding, and you gave back, and in, in 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 you know, in the sport that you loved and was so good to you, you know, not only people like me, but just uh, and then you know, you said you stopped coaching because you know you just it was just hard for you to, you know, not have excellence, you know, and the commitment from the kids, and you just decided that that it was just too hard for you. So, and I understand that completely as a coach yeah, for 30 it years. It wasn't too hard for me. It's just, I have standards. Right. And I'm not going to put an inferior product on the track. Mm-hmm. Amen. Not with my name behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, some kids come out so they can wear the uniform, they impress the girls or whatever. Um, I was not interested in that. I, 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 I did it at first. <laughs> at first, but I stayed for three years. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I, you had, you had heart. I, I, that's one thing that I always appreciated about you. You did have heart because I know, I know I took from my coach some, some crazy stuff, <laughs> but it worked. It worked. Um, I swear to God, I tried to run as fast as I could. I could not catch Anthony Kellum or Jack Seller. Yeah. I could not catch those guys. I mean, they were running 15s. You know, you, I think he actually cracked 14. I was like, man, there is, I was barely getting high 18s. And I'm like, man, I'm, I swear I'm trying. I'm dying here. I just couldn't, you know, I didn't have the capacity, I don't think. I trained. What happens is 
gifting when we're born, gifting when we're born. Um, there's a tolerance level that God gives you when you're born and you cannot supersede that level. Uh, sprinters are born. Mm -hmm. That's why, and I hate to use his name, Noah Lyles. Uh, see, Mr. Wright would choke him out because Mr. Wright said, act like you've been there before. Mm -hmm. He said, when you, he said, run through the tape, don't run to it. And don't show up your competitors. Uh, Noah Lyles better hope he make the Olympic team because this high school boy ran past him in heats the other day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, so right now, if you play second in your semifinal, you're, you're fighting for third spot on the Olympic team, mathematically. Um, I, I hope he makes it, but I hope he changes his attitude. Because in the 100, he, he yelled, yeah, <laughs> and he almost came in last place. <laughs> When you make yourself a target, yeah, people marry that image. And if they have the, the, the same amount of talent that you have, you better be careful. Uh, right. like, the, like the kids say, you better watch your back. That's right. <laughs> Coach, I want to ask you, um, you know, we talked a little bit about your attitude and how you handled, uh, you know, uh, racism and you know social injustice growing up and, and you just you stuck to those three words and and stayed focused obviously you, you not only had a gift to be able to run forever but you had you had a gift to uh, have some mental toughness on and off the track and and yeah. take the lessons that your family taught you to keep your nose to the grindstone and, and uh, treat people the way you want to be treated and stuff. And, and people would see your body of work when it's all said and done. And that's, that's really who you were um, despite the sign of the times. And so, you know, we had obviously we've had for centuries and decades and you've seen it more than most of us um, social injustice and lynchings and racism and segregation and assassinations. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it came to a head uh, last summer with the death of George Floyd. Yes, it did. And, um, you know, he was just, uh, the police officer, Derek Chauvin was just sentenced and not, no, not long enough, but, you know, um, at least there was justice of a police officer, which far too often there's settlements and, and the police officers don't go to jail. And so what, what, you know, it's been uh, over, over a year since mm -hmm. that. And, you know, you experienced it in the sixties and, you know, your whole life, but what reflecting back on it and, and, you know, uh, seeing what's happened last year, more white people are speaking out than I, ever before from what I've experienced and what people have right. shared with us on the show. And so what do you feel a different kind of hopeful? Do you see policy changes are going in a better direction? Do you think this is finally it? I don't know. You know, Mike, um, first of all, Black people, we knew where we stand. You, when you know where you stand, you know what to expect. You know, if you're going for a job that's for white people, you know, you probably guarantee you're not going to get it. Uh, when I was growing up, I was told I'd have to be twice as good as a white person to, to achieve. So my thing is, I focus on what I can do. Now, I have so many white friends. Um, <laughs> I think, in fact, I think I have more white friends than I have black friends. But I don't consider people as white or black. I just consider them as human. Um, but we, we know, but I always, like I said about my focus, if you have a goal, if you have a focus, if you have tunnel vision, I say to myself, does this racism affect what I'm trying to do? Yes or no. If the answer is no, then I'm going to continue on my pace because uh, there are things that I can't do anything about. And I learned this as a youngster because when I was uh, small running around the block, 
I was always the last one chosen. Yeah, okay, we'll take Lou. You know, but that was because I was small, but it, all my friends were black, but um, I always felt left out. So when I got to high school, when I got under the tutelage of Mr. Wright, um, he told me to stay focused. He said, if there's something that you can do about anything to make a change, do it. If you can't do anything about it, leave it alone or let it go and let God. See, God has brought me through so many things. I even just, I, sh I shudder to think driving to California in a 10 year old car with a wife and a baby and no money. You know, even today, I think that was foolish, <laughs> but I was determined. Um, well, everyone does it in different ways. Some people yes, are more they, vocal, yes, like Muhammad Ali or Arthur oh, Ashe yeah. or, you know, and, and, but it's people like you and others who had the courage and the fortitude to push through in, in, in your way, whether it's mm -hmm. quietly <laughs> or, uh, you know, more in the public eye. And that's the reason why 144 women in the WNBA changed the election in Georgia or right. people That's aren't right. afraid people aren't afraid to speak up now about mental health it's not as taboo in the african american community to talk about you know things that that affect you between the ears and above the eyebrows or you know other things that are happening in the ncaa where the women uh, have a barbell and the guys have a complete weight room. I saw you right. I saw that. <laughs> I no, was but, proud of them. but it's because of people like you that, that uh, it, you're not going to be blackballed or you're not going to lose endorsements. If anything, it's encouraged Colin Kaepernick, you yes. know, to speak out because if you don't now uh, then, it, you know, you're disrespecting the people like you that, that came before you that sacrificed so much. And now it's so easy to speak out. I mean, easier. It's not. It's not easy ever. I don't think to 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 tell your story. You know, to have to look over your shoulder every time you walk out of your house as an African American, or when you're driving in the car, that you have to do double takes still when police officers pass by you, and still have to have the talks with your kids. Like that's oh, never correct. easy. But correct. but it is a little bit easier now because of people like you. Well, I'm not going to take credit this undue, but. Well, I'll I, give you the credit nonetheless. Thank you. But as, as a deacon, uh, as a um, child that had a, a, a preacher for a, a dad, uh, I've always learned about faith. And my daddy always talked about faith. And I've always had faith in anything that I decided to do. And if you tell me that I can't do it because I'm black, because I'm short, because I have two left feet or two right feet, um, you you already did messed up. Because see, when you tell me I can't do something, then that's what that's what I'm gonna focus on and make sure that I can do it. But um, uh, I have been blessed. Um, I'm not going to say I have never been discriminated against. I have, but it took it with a grain of salt. But, you know, as, as a deacon, I know better. See, when Jesus' uh, disciples were with him, he said, you go and tell, tell the people. And, she, and, and if they uh, disagree with you, he said, uh, dust yourself off and go on to the next person. That's it. You know, so if you, if, if I always say my favorite term is never get off the horse you rode in town on. Okay. If the, the horse that rides you in town uh, is the horse to success, now I'm going to stay on that horse. And if I fall off, I'm going to brush myself off and get right back up on top. But um, uh, the key to this life is perseverance. The key to this life is perseverance. Fight a good fight, stay on the course, and keep the faith. Well, and don't don't look at failure as a negative. It, it's something that taught you early on to not be so cocky. 
on the, yes, on, the on the track and then you know you you had you thought you were training and had to train even harder and you know it's it's always a a, a continuous in, you know infinite process life where you know you never have all the answers it's it's like you said you fall down you get up but it's hard for kids now i think it's different because they want instant gratification and we, we, we used to train differently back then. We saw the world differently. We didn't have so much social media and all this other stuff to detract us from, from having a great work ethic and, you know, keeping a great attitude and stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, we could learn a lot from, from being old school, so to speak. Uh, you you are absolutely correct. You are absolutely correct. But uh, with me, I used failure as a learning tool. Totally. You see, uh, if you use failure to beat yourself down, uh, you, you're not going to progress at all. Um, th there's an education in victory and there's an education in uh, mm -hmm. defeat. Totally. Um, but if you have a goal, if I'm going to make the Olympic team, I can't let a defeat bother me what is it that I did? Uh, what do I need to do to improve myself? But my key was I needed to work harder and well, to get older and develop. And you enjoyed the journey. You know, it wasn't always um, easy. You had to put one leg over the side of the bed sometimes, but you know, um, you, you love the journey. Loved it. I, you know, <laughs> when I say it was hard, but it was, um, a, a joy, a love. I In love. other words, I, I'm not saying it was hard because I couldn't do it. It was hard because I had to do it and I was going to do it. <laughs> well, you had a family, you know, you were, oh, yes. you were broke, you know, dealing with but things I had that you were goal. dealing with. Yeah. I had a goal. And, you know, once I made the team and all the other guys, now I got to find a job. Right. So I come back to Detroit and, um, at the interview, they said, well, how was Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had a job right then. <laughs> usually when you had those interviews, man, they, they could take you through the ringer. But right. when they brought up, how, how did you? And I made sure I wrote it down on the bottom of the application in large letters. <laughs> 1968 Olympian track and field, 5,000 meters. <laughs> I need a job yesterday. <laughs> oh, man. And the city of Detroit owes you a debt. Um, man, so we got the rapid fire, the fun, this or that, quick answer segment of yeah, the podcast. Yeah, we can, we, can, we can finish it now. I'm, I'm good. I, got All right, let's... I have endurance. <laughs> yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> so, wait, you're wearing a couple of rings besides your wedding ring. What, what are those rings on your left hand? This is my wedding band here. Yeah. Um, I'm married. That's right. <laughs> so, but don't you have, you, it looks like you have some, some sport rings there or something. These, uh, oh, can you, oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, the first one is um, my senior ring uh, oh. from Arizona State University. Wow. Yeah, it's got the great state of Arizona, 1967, Arizona, Bachelor of Arts degree. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm moving. No, you're good, wow. And, and my second ring is the Olympic ring. Ah, uh, that's the one, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Does it have your name on it? Everything, like, was it, it's individual? Your initials are engraved on the inside, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, well, what a, what a, what a journey, man, that's... That's just, uh, it's, there's not many people, uh, you know, from that 68 Olympics still. And you talk to some of those guys still? Um, Mel Pender and uh, Bob Beeman, we stay in touch quite often. Wow. Um, with my wife being sick now, I can't um, travel and, as much. And Tom, Tom Lowe, also a 68 Olympian. Um, uh, you know, they like to get together and I just, you know, I, my wife needs 24 seven care and I, I just can't leave her. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we talk every now and again. Wow. We we are friends for life. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned that, that we've, I've taught, I just had Carl Mecklenburg on, he played for the Denver Broncos, part of that mm -hmm. orange crush. And, you know, I've talked to Jay Billis about the, 
you know, the, the brotherhood, and I don't know if you were friends with some of the, the, the uh, women Olympians as well. If, you know, oh, you, yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, because Why they've. <laughs> yeah. She won the hundred. It's just that we didn't associate, because the women sure. were on the other side of the, uh, uh, you know, they had a campus. They were on the sure. complete other side. You almost never saw them. But the they connection that you, but the connection that you have with everybody is just something that you could go years between oh, seeing yeah. or talking to each other, and it's just something that you can't, you, you just don't understand unless you went through it. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Um, the, From oh, Belle yeah. Isle to the Olympics, unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it was the Olympic Development Program. Right. And see, when they gave me medals. Uh, I told them they messed up, and then <laughs> and, and then they had the nerve to give me a trophy. I said, "Oh Lord!" <laughs> um, at one point, I had a trophy room. Wow! I mean, I, they were everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, from high, uh, I was being college champions in high school. Amazing! I never will forget. I went to um, Toronto, Canada. Uh, and uh, I was running in a race. Uh, all the guys were college runners. I didn't know that. You know, the coach just said, come on and run. Yeah, it was just a, like an open invitational or yeah, something. Yeah, it was open invitational. Yeah. So um, Bruce Kent, at that time, he was in the class of uh, Jerry Langley, and mm. he was lapping everybody. <laughs> and he was about to lap me, but I said, you're not going to lap me. <laughs> and I came in second to him. Wow. And when I finished, Everybody say, what college do you go to? Right? Oh, I said, I'm in 11th I'm in 11th grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's classic. He lapped, he lapped everybody but me. And he trust me, he was trying. He, he was trying. He was trying, but I look back, I said, no, <laughs> I said, no, sir. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I, man. I could go on and on. It's just so many wonderful experiences. Uh, I have beaten people that I only dreamed I could beat. But, you know, when you're determined, when you're focused, when you have a, a, um, a workout a schedule that mm -hmm. uh, is above theirs because you double it, um, you know, and then my faith. And I'm, I'm like this. Once you get in shape, that's what, 99%. The rest is mental. Yep. The rest is mental. Yep. And and see, when when I beat some of those guys, the college champions in high school, um, I put that in my computer and thought yep. about it. And then when I started beating um, college champions, and when I came in one step behind Jerry Lindman in the national AAU championships, I said, oh, boy, I'm... <laughs> I, I'm I'm headed for the Olympics. <laughs> That's right. And when I got to Olympic Village, I said I'm gonna be on the Olympic team, five thousand meters. They mm. said, Lou, everybody's saying that. I said, Yeah, but I mean it. <laughs> I love I it. I mean it. <laughs> That's my coach right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's hit the the rapid fire, and then we'll leave the floor to you. If there's anything else that uh, that you wanted to share that we didn't that we didn't touch on, then uh, like your diet and your exercise, and you know how important that is to you, we'll leave the floor to you before we uh, uh, we will let you go because I know you got to get home to your your amazing wife and your daughter's helping Thank out you. today, and Thank yeah. You. And, so, okay, Greenfield Village or the Detroit Art Institute? Both. Both. We got a tie on the first question. Okay, favorite yeah. athlete of all time besides yourself? Ooh, that's a hard one. Man, I had so Joe many. Lewis. Yeah, we Ooh, Muhammad Ali. I met him personally. Wow. Um, uh, you, you know, because he, I wouldn't have changed my name, but anyway, Muhammad Ali. Um, mm -hmm. I never will forget when he fought the first world championship, he was bragging. I, I didn't like that. Because, <laughs> right, you know, of course you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. My coach taught, taught us against that. But when he beat Sonny Liston, Sonny Liston when yep. he beat him, he said, I took his greatest punches. No, I took his best punches. I am the greatest. That's right. And ever since then, I was a fan. Of, but I have many others, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 
uh, Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan. Oh man, I I, I can go on. But if I had my all-time favorite, I would say Muhammad Ali, mm. because uh, even though they took his title, uh, they gave it back, and he wanted you know took more than once uh, uh, afterwards. So I would say Muhammad Ali. <laughs> So did you actually have a face-to-face -face with Jesse Owens? Did you have a chance to talk to him? Not a face-to-face -face because at the Olympic Village, he, he was, was just a speaker. You know, speaker, you know, for all the Olympians. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wish I could have gotten a face-to-face -face with him, but he was like isolated. Yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Jim Wright. Some, certain af people were isolated. Um, my... A reward from all of that was being uh, in their company. Sure, of course. Being in their yeah. company. Because, you know, you know, I don't, don't get to talk to everybody. <laughs> yeah. So you the ran into... Yeah, go ahead. Wrote, the governor wrote me a letter thanking me for uh, representing Michigan in the Olympics. Wow. And I thought that was special. Yeah, that was. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. You still have yeah. that letter? Uh, I'm sure I got it somewhere, but it was handwritten. Yeah, I, wow. I have, but I have so much stuff. I don't go through it anymore like I used to, but I used to know where each and everything was. A lot of the papers, uh, I bought my first scrapbook in 1959. A lot of the papers are starting to disintegrate. <laughs> well, you should consider maybe, uh, I don't know, the Smithsonian, the African American Museum. Um, yeah. I'm sure they would love to, you know, talk to you uh, about, you know, maybe something to put in there as, you know, being the second, the second long distance, you know, African American in history to to be on the Olympic team. I'm sure so that would be something that that they could, uh, you know, if you're interested in talking to them, because I know I've had some correspondence with them about donations and things like that. So it's an it's an amazing museum. If they're interested, I'm I'm interested. Yeah, that would be amazing. I'll 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 shoot them a correspondence and and uh, give them Benny's contact info and see if they're okay. they're interested. That would be amazing. That'll work. Well, des well deserved. Uh, okay, so you ran in Tokyo, London, and Italy. Where where was the best food in those places, or which one of those countries had the best food? It was almost a tie because you know. <laughs> When you coming from America, uh, representing the, the government, everybody pushed their best foot forward. Mm, right, of course. Uh, the, food, the food was good. I, 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 I <laughs> that, that would be a hard one. Uh, Germany, the food was extremely good. Mm -hmm. uh, except the only thing I didn't like in Europe, um, they don't like to cook their meat well done. Oh Lord. Hey, you mess up the you mess up the food, man. <laughs> I said you eat your food your way, and I'll eat my food That's my right. way. <laughs> that was the only thing with the with the meat. They didn't like to um, they didn't like well done. And I'm I'm like this. If I put my fork in the food and it's got blood in it, I'm not eating it. <laughs> That's classic, Coach. Uh, Lawrence Welk or Hee Haw? Yeah, Lawrence. Lawrence Welk. Uh, honeymooners or all in the family? Ooh, all in the family with, with ease. <laughs> <laughs> Archie Bunker. Yeah, I, he's another one of my favorite people. Oh, man. Although he wasn't a real person. Right. But, uh, um, uh, the actor that played Archie Bunker. Oh, classic. And then he All went on classic. to do In the Heat of the Night. Right. Uh, his last name is Carol, but... Carol uh, O'Connor, yeah. Carol O'Connor, thank you. Mm -hmm. I I admire people who can change like that. Totally. Because he he played the ultimate bigot. <laughs> and in real life, he wasn't. I know, but, right. but you have to be good to play God. That character might have been my favorite show of all time. He was good, you know. I knew he wasn't a racist, yeah, but he played it so as well. well I mean, he played <laughs> it so well that you could believe that he was. <laughs> so I knew he wasn't, but he really he he did a fantastic, masterful, masterful. yes, he did. Uh, Abbott and Costello, I Love Lucy, or the Three Stooges. Oh, 
the three stooges. <laughs> that's that. That's not one easy. That's two easy. Oh man, I man. I, <laughs> but I love the original Larry Moore and Curly. Oh, totally. Yes, agreed. Uh, um, Curly got sick later on, and he had to leave. But um, mm -hmm. uh, I we used to, you know, as children, we <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But everybody, oh, that by far the three stooges. That, that's not even close. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, Bing Crosby, Nat King Cole, Billy Holiday, or Duke Ellington. Woo! That's a tough one. Mm. I like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that that's it's hard to put a knife between those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have to say a tie on all four. Four way tie. Uh, bingo yeah. or Scrabble? Bingo. Love bingo. Mm. Who's your biggest rival at Arizona State? Which which college? Was it Arizona? The University of Arizona. Yeah, of course. In state Yeah, rivals. They were right down the street. Yeah. Favorite fact, my you Go remember ahead. my junior year when I was sick? Mm -hmm. Um the last the last meet I ran, I ran the last two. The last one was against Arizona. If I hadn't gotten well, we wouldn't have won that meet. And we had beaten them uh, every year that I was at Arizona State. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Mm, Sparkle. Wow. Tell people about that movie, what, what that movie is about. Uh, Sparkle was about a young man that wanted to uh, have a group, a singing group. Right. And th they were really, really good, but they had a lot of difficulty. Um, one of the guys, is the original uh, star in it, uh, he played in, uh, not a wife, but uh, anyway, but uh, he was uh, trying to get this singing group together. And then, um, the, then the question came to money, and he borrowed some money from some um, mobsters, oh, mm. <laughs> and they 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 didn't want him to pay the money back. He had the money; they wanted to get in on the uh, group and the yeah. wow. you know payments. So what happened was they put a gun to his head, but it was empty. But they kept pulling the trigger, and he kept saying no. Uh, I'm gonna pay you back, or or that's it. But uh, that was a great, great movie. Interesting. Great, great movie. Huh. They, in fact, um, Thelma Houston started it. Starred in the uh, second one, the new one, wow. the newer version. I have to check that out. I hadn't heard of that one. Jack Nicholas or Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods. <laughs> Not because he's black, <laughs> because he did something I I felt that was important. Going across racial lines. Uh, correct. He did something special, like the Williams sisters in tennis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, we just talked about the Williams sisters a little bit on one of our previous podcasts. About I can't imagine what they had to go through in in such they a went white, through, what such they, a white sport. Nobody has any they idea. They went through pure hell. Trust yeah. me. Yep. And then you know Arthur Ashe was my teammate. Really? But, you know, some of the people we didn't see, you know, other teams like boxing, it was George Foreman, mm -hmm. uh, Arthur Ashe was on the tennis team, but we never saw them because they had their own camp. Right, right, right. There was a lot wow. of famous people that were uh, on that team. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Did you ever talk to Arthur? No, we... Because you couldn't. Number one, Arthur Ashe had yeah. a, he had an entourage. You wouldn't get to talk to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> so was that a shoe that your uh, auntie bought you? Your favorite shoe that you've ever had? No. What was your favorite um, shoe? Once uh, I I I loved the Adidas. Mm. The Adidas, for me, mm -hmm. just uh, I got me a pair of blue suede shoes. Adidas, and um, all my fastest times were ran in those blue suede shoes. I love it. What's yes, your favorite sir. music? Gospel. Oh, that makes sense, <laughs> of course. I sing in a group called the Spiritual Five. I'm a first and second tenor and lead. Wow. You want to blow something for us real quick? 
<laughs> Let's go, Deacon. I Reverend. I am on the battlefield, oh my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Uh -huh. And I promise him that I, I, I'm going to serve him till I die. Because I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, that was awesome. I can blow. I, <laughs> I started to major in music in college. Wow. That was already hard enough for sure. Yes, sir. Uh, famous phrases from the 50s that we don't really say anymore. Cruising for a bruising, knuckle sandwich, or burn rubber. All three of those are good. <laughs> Another All time. Three of those are good. Yeah, burn, <laughs> burn rubber is something... A lot of my parents did when they dropped their students off <laughs> way before school started. That's right. And they would burn rubber in the parking lot. Of course. <laughs> man, that, those were crazy days. I crazy. asked a little boy, I said, man, don't your mother know what time we start? He said, yeah. But she said, you got, you got to go to school. <laughs> That's classic, Coach. Leave him out there, all no protection, man. That's amazing. Different time. Famous phrases of the two thousands: bling or dope. Yeah. As a Christian, I don't care for I don't care for either one of those. Right, that's true. Or uh, okay, how about fire or lit? <laughs> fire. Okay, there we go. That's fire or peace out. Peace out. <laughs> That's popping or what's crack a lacking? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about chill out or you're tripping? Chill out. Let's blow this pop stand or let's dip. I'm not familiar with that. Let's dip. If it means let's go, I'll take let's yeah. dip. <laughs> let's dip. There you go. Uh, okay. So it's a wonderful life or Casablanca? Wonderful life. The Wizard of Oz, Willy Wonka, or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The Wizard of Oz. French toast, pancakes, or waffles? Woo, all three. <laughs> <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, okay, so Usain Bolt, Donovan Bailey, Ben Johnson, cheater, or Michael Johnson? You said Ben's eyes were yellow uh, at one point. Yeah, right? yeah. You, you call him a cheater. <laughs> I do too. Alleged, right? It, no, he he was caught. He was caught, right? Yeah, he was caught. It was no alleged in it. <laughs> he had a poor muscle. He had a poor muscle, and he healed uh, way too quick mm -hmm. without dope. <laughs> right. <laughs> Give me those names again. I, Usain Bolt, Donovan Bailey. Ben Johnson or Michael Johnson? Michael Johnson. Wow. Why? Uh, he he broke the world's record in the 400 and the 200. Mm -hmm. He set the standard. Yeah. He ran 43, low 43s in the 400, and he ran 1932 in the 200. Yeah, and his he, event was a 400. He broke the world record in the 200 first. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Well, I can't wait to watch the Olympics this year. It's going to be definitely oh, it's, different. It's going to be amazing. Our team, our team is really, really strong. I know our 68 team was strong, but I believe, no, I don't believe. They <laughs> are stronger than we were. But then again, they're professionals too. <laughs> yes, of course. It's different. Florence Griffith Joyner, Jackie Joyner Kersey, Evelyn Ashford, or Marion Jones? Marion Jones was a cheater. Mm-hmm. She yep. got busted for dope. Yep. So she's off the list. She's out. Um, you, you said, um, who was the first one? Florence Griffith Joyner or Jackie Joyner Kersey or Evelyn Ashford? Jackie. Because mm -hmm. Florence never got caught, but she was she, she was on that 
no steroids. She was running faster than most men in the trials. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it was a different time back then for sure, yeah. I, I would imagine. Uh, well, that's Je- when they just got started with the dope. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Owens or Carl Lewis? Easy, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Easy. So who was your favorite runner to coach besides me? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Uh, that was there was a plethora of them. You were one. Um, so you coached not, at Oak Park. Where else did you coach besides Oak Park? Because you coached at an all white school, right? Yeah, University Lake was a high school. And so that that's Gross my, Point now. Gross Point. It was in Gross Point all the time. Mm-hmm. But they probably changed the name since then. But it was University Lake at mm. Gross Point back then. That mm-hmm. was my first paid job. I didn't know that coaches didn't make money. Mm, right. <laughs> so I was one of the few that, I mean, in the first group to start getting paid to coach. Coaching yeah. was an honor. But right. uh, I coached at University of Liggett and I went over to Martin Luther King. Then I went to um, Southwestern. Um, mm. And I uh, then I went to Oak Park, mm. the high schools, yes. Yeah. You never had aspirations to coach at the college level. I did, but the opportunity never presented itself. Mm-hmm. I I applied to coach at Wayne State University, but wow. they dropped they dropped track. Mm. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. Well, coach, it, it's uh, it's truly been an honor. I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to share that we didn't touch on or anybody else that you've met or other stories, you know, about your journey. But uh, uh, we truly appreciate your time. And like I said, I was looking forward to this, uh, you know, in so many ways, you know, you're still in great shape. You still train, you're eating right. Your blood sugar is good now. You know, you're 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 you know, taking care of your, your wife, um, you know, you, your brother's amazing. Uh, you know, you got still got a lot of things going for you. Um, and so your journey is truly an inspiration. Um, you know, what you've lived through and what the lessons that you've taught so many people to, to live by on and off the track, um, you know, are things that people could you know, really learn from and, and how you uh, approached racism and, and just kept kept going. And it's just, it's truly an inspiration and an honor to have you, you know, on the Sports Deli today. Thank you so much. The main thing that I always uh, taught is never deal the negative. Always accentuate the positive mm. because negatives will get you nowhere and get you there fast. Yes. Um, think positive be positive uh the fruit of the holy spirit is love the three statements in front are love joy and peace Mm. and since they're free i choose to be happy (laughs) (laughs) there's love joy peace long suffering uh goodness gentleness temperance um against such there is no law there's no law Mm. against being happy no law against being peaceful (laughs) <laughs> no law against loving people. Um, if, if it's negative, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I tell my wife right now, she 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 has arthritis and it got worse with the strokes. But I told her, I said, I'm sorry that your legs hurt, but you still have to do this. Mm. I can't do this for you. Uh, she weighs about the same thing I weigh now. I'm about I'm down to 155. She weighs 159. I told her I cannot carry you. Mm. You're gonna have to carry your own load, but you, you, it's gonna be all right. Mm. But always be positive. Stay focused. Don't let the devil get you down. <laughs> That's right. When everything starts to fall apart, it's nothing but the devil. <laughs> Yeah, well, you learned at a young age to strive for excellence, and you've done it in every corner uh, of your life, and uh, you should be proud of that, and it's, you know, why so many people after you have had the opportunity uh, to live their dreams, uh, because, you know, you laid the foundation for for so many people, so 
um, you know, much love and, and the utmost respect for you. And, you know, you don't realize things sometimes until you, you reflect back on it. I know a lot of the, my teammates are looking forward to listening to this and they, they were so excited that you were coming on and, and, uh, We've been in 27 countries uh, and, um, you know, we're approaching 10,000 downloads and, you know, wow. which is, is it's all good and great and all that. But it's just more about the message and yes, the lessons sir. learned from life and, and people's experiences. And if they can relate to it and learn from it, uh, even if it just touches one person, then then it, then then, you know, it means the world to me. And I know it does to you as well. Yeah, my coach always told me, he said, a winner never quits, and a quitter never wins. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I care. I, he gave me so many uh, sayings mm. to keep me on track, and mm. that was one of them. But he always told me, he said, a winner never quits, and he said, <laughs> and a quitter never wins. And that is true in any uh, time, in any walk of life. You're mm -hmm. correct. Um, but if if a, I always say, if you see a champion, I'll show you a person who works hard. Yep. As simple as that. Facts. Always keep learning. Yes, and, sir. Uh, never think you know it all for sure. When you stop learning, you're already dead. You're waiting for the burial date. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, I, I um, insist on learning daily. I insist on it. Yeah. What, what are you reading now? Uh, I'm not reading anything. No, I'm saying like you have a good book that oh, you're reading. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant right right now. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, as a deacon, um, I have to stay in my scriptures. Sure. Yeah, of I, course. You know, when I the first thing I do when I get up, I read uh, Upper Room, Daily Bread, the Bible. But I heard you got a Please. cell phone now, so I do. <laughs> hey, <laughs> since they took the car phones out of the car, <laughs> <laughs> I had to break down to get a cell phone. But I I do have a cell phone. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'll stay in touch, Coach. Uh, thank you for everything you did for me and my teammates and and the memories. Uh, you know, I don't remember any parties or, you know, get togethers at your house or anything like that. But but, no. but what I do remember is uh, what you taught us about no, not making excuses and, you know, how to how to get better, you know, and 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 how to train and, and how that spills over into your your daily life and, and how to get better in your daily life. And I appreciate that very much because yeah. you can't measure success by someone else you can only measure success by you by yourself and uh sometimes your success will supersede others sometimes it will not but you have to determine the level of success that you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. and uh, i don't try to measure or compete with anybody else i i compete with myself like simone biles mm. she, she's in a wow. class she's in a class of all Holy <laughs> she's something yeah but she right now she understands that she has to compete with herself sure because there's nobody in her in, in her class None. but uh but success to me is measured by the goal that you set and did you achieve it Mm -hmm. that, that's that's it. And then yeah. pay it forward. Yes, but thank you so much, Mike. God bless you. Yes, I love sir. you, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but I got to get back to the wife. You got to yeah. listen and learn from other people, and and you know, uh, you take those lessons with you, and and uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've had my own journey, and I just try and pay yeah. it forward the best way I can, but. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this was one that I was looking forward to. Wow. Number 77 was was uh, historic and a first for him, first for us, and and honored to have, have both of you on. Thank you. It sounds good. All right, coach, you look amazing. You don't you don't Thank look you. any different than when you were coaching us, man. It's, it's amazing. You haven't aged a bit. 
<laughs> My body hair, <have>, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll talk soon. Much love. Okay, okay, All right. Thank you so All much right talk love. to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this incredible three-part series with Lou Scott, member of the 1968 men's track and field Olympic team that competed in Mexico City. For Dr. J and Coach K, I'm Hootie Hoot. Please mask up if you haven't been vaccinated yet. Stop Asian hate. Remember, Black Lives Matter. And until next time, remember, it takes a village. Peace. Sports Deli is sponsored by PSK Collective. Be inspired in PSK. Their clothing line promotes inclusivity, empowerment, and equality. And you can find them online at Kohl's.com, Walmart.com, TJMaxx.com, Lids.com, and now Target.com. The Sports Deli is sponsored by Moolah Kicks. Moolah is M-O-O-L-A-H, like money, Moolah. And Kicks, like shoes, one word. You can find them online at MoolahKicks.com. And it's the first ever female-only brand basketball shoe. So it's a shout out to the basketball street culture and it is also about fighting social injustice and gender inequality worldwide and here in the United States. And again, you can find them at moolahkicks.com. The Sports Deli is sponsored by City Lokes, C-I-T-Y-L-O-C-S. You can find them online at citylokes.com where you can go and make your own personalized license plate hats. They're so cool. You got to check them out. And don't forget to enter the code the Sports Deli at checkout for your special 10% discount. Sports Deli is sponsored by Sport RX, the leader in sport prescription eyewear. You can find them online at sportrx.com. And don't forget to enter the code Deli10 at checkout for your special 10% discount. And now This is a picture of Coach Scott winning the city championship while at Eastern High School in Detroit, Michigan. Can't thank Coach enough for joining us. And he's wearing his Olympic jacket here. And until next time again, peace.